Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the NASCAR Heat 5 career mode here on the channel today. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we go to Charlotte Motor Speedway in all three series here, the Trucks, Xfinity, and the Cup Series. I only just showed the finishing order of the Xfinity Series, but here we are ready for the NC Education Lottery 200 at Charlotte Motor Speedway here for the uh, Truck Series where we have, of course, Eric Jones in the truck in this number 51 Toyota 4. Kyle Busch Motorsports now. So Eric comes into this race with two wins on the season so far. So a very strong start to Eric now. Uh, like I said, I think you're really going to have to watch out for Eric Jones potentially getting a cup ride this season in the career mode even uh, before the season is all said and done. Obviously, he won't be in any chance of contention for a playoff uh, picture situation, but he might very well be in the cup series before you know it now as it goes down this back straight away. Started uh, just outside the top 10 here in Charlotte. Now as he went down into turns three just behind the 88 there of Matt Crafton but he was using this inside lane to really move himself forwards here in this opening stages of this race here in Charlotte now as it goes down the front straightaway pushing that 88 of Crafton there across the line as it goes down towards turns one of the inside of the three of Jordan Anderson so like I said, using this inside lane, Jones was really able to make that work in his favor. Now as he comes through out of turn two, there you see just behind him, Stuart Friesen, the Canadian, as he went down. This backstretch actually made a three wind there with Crafton, who backed down to the three wind very severely and lost a lot of ground. But then Eric gets up the inside now a little bit later of the 40 truck of Ross Chastain as well. He gets up the inside of the 98 of Grant and Finger sliding up the track a little bit, nearly making contact there as they came through out of turns four. And that would allow Chastain to force the three wind up the inside. You can never... Uh, count Ross Chastain out uh, when it comes to aggressive situations. He's always up in the uh, kind of picture making things aggressive. So you always know Chastain is going to do something wild and sure enough he made a three wide there but Eric would be able to pass him back as he went down into turns one. A little bit later he would repass the 40 of Ross Chastain. Chastain actually did try to fight back down the back straightaway though. He would get side by side with Eric here as they were pretty even down the back stretch towards turns three but Eric would be able to pass Ross again into turn three as Ross continued though to try and fight back but he just didn't quite have enough in the truck so Eric would settle in right there uh, just in front of Chastain and the 98 of Grant Enfinger but then the caution would actually come out late in the race forcing an overtime restart with Eric in P5 as the green flag came out overtime here in Charlotte. Now as Eric would make a three wide on the inside and all go all the way to the front here in Charlotte now and take the lead in the final laps of this race as now the leaders just get caught sleeping as it's no uh, obviously uh, like don't get me wrong like the AI are good in restarting in the Cup Series, but in the Trucks and Xfinity Series, for some reason, they take off slow, so slow on the restarts. And of course, Eric was able to pounce on that opportunity there and take the lead. Now as it comes through to the final lap, leading the way over Austin Hill and the 16 at the white flag. One lap remains for Eric Jones as he looks for win number three on the season. He goes down through turns one and two for the final time here in the North Carolina Education Lottery 200 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Down the back straightaway for the final time. Austin Hill would actually get a run on Eric. He would go defensive towards the bottom into turns three. They make contact into turns three. And into the wall goes the 51 of Eric Jones completely giving away the win here on the final lap as he comes through out of turns four side by side with Ross Chastain. Austin Hill wins in Charlotte and Jones comes through to cross the line instead of winning the race he finishes in P5 here in Charlotte he was leading into turns three but uh, like I said Austin Hill had a run on Eric into the corner Eric of course going very defensive unfortunately uh, Austin Hill was still down there but Eric of course tried to block him anyways and unfortunately it just wasn't uh, meant to be now here in Charlotte now as we're gonna see a recap here of the Xfinity series of just the finishing order again Michael Annette actually actually won again here in the Xfinity series. Apparently his AI is pretty good. So now though you see Eric Jones actually uh, finished 19th. He was in the Xfinity series car again for us here in the Ausco uh, 300 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And there you see uh, the rest of the finishing order. So now it was time though to get underway for the Coca-Cola 600, a crown jewel for the second time this season. Of course, one of the longest races on the schedule as well. 
but we jump through into qualifying here for the Coca-Cola 600, hoping for at least like a top 15, kind of preferred, but through turns one and two, I got a little bit loose there. The car definitely wasn't handling the greatest, and I came through turns three and four, and I got through there pretty well. The car felt pretty good there as we came through pretty close to the wall on the exit of turns four, coming through though to cross the line with a 29.834, way off of our goal, and it shows here because we go P19 for Coca-Cola 600 qualifying. So definitely not what we were looking for now is we're definitely going to have our work cut out for us here in the Coca-Cola 600. There you see uh, Bobby Carter, Bubba Wallace down at the uh, bottom of the field now. Daniel Suarez, Jimmy Johnson just in front of myself. As you see, Christopher Bell rounds out the top 10. And on the pole, it is going to be Martin Truex Jr. Thanks, guys, for all the hard work coming into this weekend. I'm going to give it absolutely everything I can for you guys. Let's go get ourselves, hopefully, a crown jewel victory here. It's a long race, what, 100 laps, so uh, a lot can go wrong. But I'm going to get, give it everything I have. There you heard the radio transmission from myself really quick here before we get ready to go green for the Coca-Cola 600. No uh, Microsoft Flight Sim in this one or Pit Report is simply uh, just because of uh, just the lack of time uh, for this video now as we see we got Cole Custer well prepared for this race with that fire symbol. Cole Custer recently had a chance to pick up a victory here in the Cup Series and it looks like he might have the speed to have a chance to do so again here tonight in the Coca-Cola 600. Now as the Coca-Cola 600 is underway from the 19th position again notice a big lighting change here just because of the whole replay system uh, so you won't really have to deal with that after the end of stage one but for this first stage you're going to notice quite the change when we switch into the replay cameras now as we dive down into turns one though behind the 48 of Jimmy Johnson the seven time champion who has won multiple Coca-Cola 600s throughout his cup series career now as Martin Truex Jr. leads away down this back straightaway Cole Custer up in the mix and you saw in the pre-race notes Cole Custer looking very strong coming into this race we're definitely gonna have to keep an eye on that rookie who's trying to be the first rookie to win this season between myself, Christopher Bell, him, and Tyler Reddick as the four drivers or four rookies I consider the ones that are going to be a realistic threat to potentially win a race set at some point throughout this season now as we come through turns one and two so now up to p14 after starting p19 just using that inside lane and driving by all the slower guys on the outside so we get to the inside of jimmy johnson out of turns four down the front straightaway completing lap two with 22 laps to go now as all these stages are split up pretty evenly so they're all going to be around 20 ish laps or so now as we clear jimmy johnson into the corner and then his teammates would actually take him three wide as i would go up the inside of matt de benedetto now into turns three and get up into the 12th position nearly making contact with him but william Byron got up into the mix and I noticed right off the bat William Byron was very fast. He had an extremely fast car. Cole Custer, he had taken the lead though at this point now as, uh, as we dive down into turns one of the inside of the 12 of Ryan Blaney. But like I said, William Byron very, very fast in this early portion of the race now. And I felt like my short run speed just wasn't there as we came through now out of turns four. Byron actually gets to my outside now on the hitting lap five once we cross the line there. And I just didn't have a whole lot for that 24. So definitely looking at William Byron as being a potential threat to work his way through the field and maybe have a chance to win this race now as we come through turns one and out of turns two. Byron still looking for career win number one here in the Cup Series as well. But we would uh, continue to follow William Byron, actually, and move to the outside of Brad Kozlowski. Did not work in my favor because I left the door open for the 88 of Alex Bowman. So learning pretty quickly that the outside is probably not going to work in our favor here today in the Coca-Cola 600. But it's better to get it out of the way early on and know that it's not going to work now as it come through. Now trying to pass Kozlowski on the bottom. And sure enough, that works way better uh, than it did on the outside now as we go down this back stretch, clearing the Penske driver of Kozlowski. Then I would actually hit the apron a little bit there in turns three on lap seven but we were okay Kurt Busch falling down the order a little bit he loses a spot to Alex Bowman and then I myself I'm going to slice to the inside of the Chip Ganassi driver as we dive down into turns one we're going to gain another spot now as it felt like the car definitely had more long run speed versus short run speed so I was kind of hoping that this run would continue to stretch out now as Kurt just barely hangs on my right rear quarter panel here as we go down the back stretch into turns three on just lap eight of 24 so far a uh, pretty exciting start to this race here in Charlotte Lots and lots of pa uh, passes here on the mile and a half track now as we came through on lap nine now out of turns two just behind Bowman I decided we're going to make a move of the inside of Alex Bowman into turns three and try to move up another position as we dive into the corner there you see up ahead William Byron Denny Hamlin Clint Boyer all three wide up in the mix together as we exit turns four Chris Busher he got up the inside of Alex Bowman after I passed him and he's kind of following me into the mix but then I noticed behind us Chase Elliott is quickly moving his way through the field like uh, his teammate of William Byron 
and I said after uh, the short tracks, Chase Elliott is going to be definitely a threat to watch. And sure enough, he is starting to come up into the picture now as Chris Busher is actually able to get up my inside as we go down the back stretch into turns three. I've made a bit of a mistake in turns two, and now he pounces on the opportunity, and he's going to pass me through turns three and four. And now we drop down into the 12th position here in Charlotte as Cole Custer continues to lead the way as we go down the back stretch now on lap 11. Elliott just behind me, about a car length or so back as we dive down into turn three. But unfortunately, I didn't have quite enough to battle with the nine. He gets to my inside and obviously still way too early in the race to really put up a too much of a fight. So I just kind of let Elliott have that position. Now as we come through crossing the line with 13 laps to go, now down to P13. So I definitely felt like we had a decent car, though, because we were running down the drivers in front of us, like Denny Hamlin, our teammate, Joey Logano, Ryan Blaney, as well as Clint Boyer. Well, obviously, Elliott Busher seemed to be a little bit faster than we were. William Byron, he had uh, continued to check out. He was moving his way forwards. Definitely, like I said, he's looking very fast in the early portions of this race, but still only about halfway through stage one. Definitely a long uh, time to go still in this race. But as we came through now on lap 13 through turns 3 and turns 4, actually the leader of Cole Custer would go crashing out of turns 4, bringing out the caution. We go by him without a problem and out of nowhere, all of a sudden, the fastest car has crashed. It completely caught me off guard. I obviously was aware the caution came out, but then I just see Cole Custer sitting on the apron there after spinning out from the lead. Clearly, he blew a tire, but fortunately for Cole Custer and that number 41 team, he would still be in the race, and he would actually be in currently P5 after crashing, but he would lose a bunch of track position to get the repairs done to that number 41 car. So he was still in the race, though, and actually still, I believe, in the top 20 as we get ready to go. Green now as the green flag is back out. Cole Custer completely throws away the stage one victory. Obviously not his fault, uh, just straight up a tire blowing, and unfortunately that would end his chances here in stage one now, but he's, like I said, still in the top 20 because he's actually right, just a little bit behind us, a few rows back as we're up the inside of Ryan Blaney. This obviously helps myself because now we're up inside the top 10 here on this restart as we have the inside of our teammate of Danny Hamlin down on the back straightaway side by side into turn three. Kevin Harvick now leads away over second place, which is, belongs to his teammate of Eric Almarola, but now it's going to belong to the 24 of William Byron now as he's going to move up into second place almost down the front straightaway now. Is Almarola though going to put up quite the fight against Byron as we dive down into turns one just behind that nine of Chase Elliott. Clint Boyer on my outside as the car just does not get through there very good as we exit turns two, pushing up the track now. Blaine will take us three wide here with myself and Clint Boyer down the back stretch towards turns three. Harvick continues to lead. I back out there trying to get down to the inside lane and unfortunately we have to give that spot up to Ryan Blaney now as you exit turns four. So not looking great here. The short run speed just doesn't quite seem to be what we need now as we come through crossing the line with six laps to go here in the first stage as we dive down into turns one. So still holding on to P10 at least there as I clip the apron just a tiny bit and move up the track as we go down this back stretch, but then Chris Busher actually got to me, and I had absolutely nothing for him. Like I said, the short run just was not playing into my advantage at this point as we came through out of turns four. Then I noticed behind us, Cole Custer was coming quickly, and he would get to my inside down the back straightaway now, coming to just two to go here in stage one, and he passes me as well, and after blowing a tire from the lead, Cole Custer is going to get back into the top ten as we came through to start the final lap here in stage one as we dive down into turns one. William Byron, he was going for second. He had faded now to fourth as Kyle Busch, our teammate, had moved up into that second position, or at least battling for second with the ten of Eric Almarola as we go down the back straightaway for the final time here in stage one, so unfortunately, it it is not going to be any stage points for us here on stage one as we come through out of turns four, pushing way up the track, making sure we stay out of the wall there as we go down the front straightaway. So it's going to be P12 here in stage one. So definitely uh, not the type of finish we were hoping for. Honestly, I felt like we had a car better of that, but I think the big thing right now is we just need a long green flag run. The car definitely felt a lot better the longer the run went on. So we definitely need to hope that we do not get any cautions uh, throughout this second second stage. But I did come to the pit lane here. I decided to loosen up the car just a little bit uh, and see if that would help any. We did gain one position as well on the pit lane now as we get ready to go green here with the start of the second of four stages here in the Coca-Cola 600. Ryan Blaney just in front of us now as the green flag is back out and stage two is underway here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. So Cole Custer there in P10. You're going to have to watch for him to move his way forwards very quickly. He was the dominant lead car when he blew that tire. So we know that he has the speed 
made capable to potentially win this race now as we come through out of turns two of the inside of Clint Boyer there Joey Logano on that outside along with William Byron as well as Kyle Busch there our teammate is just behind us we got our other teammate of Danny Hamlin and then I actually clipped the apron making contact now with the 41 of Cole Custer and that leaves the door open for Hamlin as well as Alex Bowman as we go down this front straightaway side by side getting in though just behind the 88 of Alex Bowman so not the restart we were looking for as we dive down into turns one we push up the track again I just pushed way too hard into the corner getting passed by the 17 as well as the two of Busher and Keselowski as we go down the back stretch but I immediately fight back to the inside of the 2012 Cup Series champion as we dive down into turn three Eric Almarola now out front here in Charlotte as we exit turns four passing Keselowski to retake that 14th position and then we would drive away from Keselowski and then run down the 17 of Busher and get back to the inside of him as we were following uh, Cole Custer through the field almost into the side of Clint Boyer as we came through out of turns four but now there's problems behind us in the number 47 of Ricky Stano shooting goes spinning collecting the 37 his teammate of Ryan Priest as well as I believe Joey Gase and that would bring out another caution here in Charlotte and like I said I was hoping for a long run well that is not going to happen now because we're going to get another restart but nobody came to the pit lane too early to pit now but this caution should make it uh, able to get us to the finish now here without making a green flag pit stop because if each stage stays green we should have to actually make a green flag pit stop in pretty much every one so we're going to see uh, Obviously, now we will not have to pit in this one. We did not have to pit in stage one, but we'll see in stage three and four to see how those ones play out. But so far in the first two stages, we've had cautions come out that have made us not have to pit under the green flag conditions. But was not a great launch again on the restart because the outside lane did not go. So now we're down to P16 under pressure from the 43 of Bubba Wallace, who's up my inside as we come through turns three and out of turns four. So now Bubba, who's currently in the playoff bubble picture, is trying to pass us there, but we were able to stay clear of him. And as we came through, now on lap 9 of stage 2 out of turns 2 of the inside of Ryan Newman into the back there of the 42 of Matt Kenseth. Kenseth well inside the playoffs right now. He looks like if he continues the consistency that he's been on, he will have no problem problem getting into the playoffs here this season in the career mode now as he come through turns 1 and 2. Slipping and sliding a little bit allowing Kenseth to fight back on the outside as we go down this back stretch side by side with the Chip Ganassi racing driver, the replacement driver for Kyle Larson as we dive down into turn 3. Kyle Busch had now taken over over the lead. Eric Almarola had faded down into that fourth position as we exit turns four. Almost clear of Kenseth, but he continues to fight back as we go down at this front straightaway. Now as I have a run on the back of Bowman and Byron, but I stayed just kind of put there, but the next time around, now on lap 11 hitting uh, lap 12, I make it three wide with Bowman and Byron William. Byron not showing that speed that he did in stage one now as Bo uh, Bowman's actually going to fight back on my outside. Byron's going to get clear as we're going to still be side by side with Alex Bowman here down the back straightaway so Bowman not going to quite give up the fight and this battle would continue on. We come through now at the end of lap uh, 12 and I was just still struggling so hard to pass Bowman. We come through all the way uh, to lap 17 and now I go to the outside of Bowman but then the caution comes out here now in stage 2 again in the later stages of the uh, of the stage and we would of course this time come to the pit lane here. We're going to put two cans of fuel in the car, four fresh tires on it and see what kind of a restart we can get. I decided to revert my wedge adjustment as well. I put it back up to 49.5 and the pit crew comes in clutch because they get me out in front of Alex Bowman who you saw I was stuck behind for what six seven laps at least now as we get ready to go green now in stage two what is going to be two laps to go here in the second stage. Kyle Busch now trying to hang on to the stage victory. He's won a few races very recently here in the career mode now as we dive down into turns one and the main thing is uh, Kyle Busch Martin Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin, all so far have gotten wins here for Joe Gibbs Racing and multiple wins apiece, except for myself, who has not won yet here in our rookie season. Of course, uh, not too much pressure now. It's our rookie season, and the Cup Series definitely got time to win. Now as we come through turns three, Eric Almarola, though, is going to get up the inside of Kyle Busch and take the lead, coming to the white flag here in the second stage at Charlotte Motor Speedway. We're up the inside of Joey Logano, trying to get a top 10 in this stage as we dive down into turns one, just behind the 12 of Ryan Blaney and Clint Boyer is going to get up into the mix behind us as we exit turn two, but we seem to get a quite the uh, better launch on the exit of the corner. And you're going to see now as we're side by side with Joey Logano that down the back straightaway for the final time here in stage two, side by side into turn three as well, just like Eric Almarola and Kyle Busch are on the exit of turns four for the stage victory. Elliott has climbed up into third, but we're going to barely get Logano for 10th here to get one stage point in the second stage. And I fought so hard for that uh, one single point, so that was a bit 
bit of a concern uh, that I had to just give it absolutely everything I had just to get one point now as we get on to get ready for the third stage here. Still two more stages remain in the Coca-Cola 600 here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, but Kyle Busch actually was able to take the stage victory away from Eric Almarola right at the end on that outside lane as we're going to get ready to line up P10 after nobody came to the pit lane there due to that pit stop late in stage two. William Byron and Martin Truex Jr. just on that row in front of us now as the green flag is back out now and the 22 of Joey Logano gets a terrible launch but the uh, 14 of Boyer pounces on the opportunity and is able to get to that inside before I was able to cut down now as you see up ahead Cole Custer third on that bottom lane that's really the main driver we're watching Chase Elliott has worked his way through the field and unfortunately the outside lane once again just not going at all here on the restart as we dive down into turns three Alex Bowman up my inside side Denny Hamlin just behind us as well and I really did not want to get trapped behind Bowman because you saw earlier in stage two how hard it was for me to pass the 88 car of Alex Bowman now as we're side by side with Kenseth after clearing Bowman as we dive down into turns one behind Ryan Blaney now as we come through the center of the corner and then the 18 of Kyle Busch still out front over second place of Chase Elliott we clipped the wall on the exit of turns two and that leaves the door open for Bowman to get clear of me and I was like there's no way I'm going to get stuck once again behind Alex Bowman so I said Ended up the inside through turns three and out of turns four, making a little bit of contact there, door to door, fender to fender, and we're going to get ourselves back in front of the 88, kind of muscling our way through on that one as we come through out of turns four. Then Hamlin actually is able to get on my inside as I was trying to pass Matt Kenseth. So now we're going to drop down into 14th place as we dive down into turns one there, just barely getting in behind the 11, nearly making contact with his right rear quarter panel now as we come through out of turns three, trying to fight back as hard as I can, but then I decided, you know what, let's try to push our teammate of Hamlin ahead of Matt Kenseth and follow him through to at least gain one spot and then try to attack Hamlin right after that now. It's come through turns three and four now as we're going to get up the inside of Kenseth just like we had planned right there to push Hamlin past him and then sure enough I have such a good run that I'm actually going to carry it almost to the inside of Hamlin but he's actually able to hold on there as we came through now out of turns four on lap seven. This time I go to the outside of our JGR teammate of Hamlin and it would end up working here on the back straightaway now on lap eight. We would clear him Hamlin into turns three using the outside lane. Not very often you can make that outside lane work, but it certainly worked there. We would run down this next group of cars of Blaney and Logano, and now I get up the inside of Ryan Blaney, and we're back into a position to strike for a stage point now as the restarts have really set us behind. These short runs have not treated us very well here so far in the Coca-Cola 600, and I felt like we've been playing catch-up every single stage so far now as we go down this back straightaway, and then we would continue in this little battle here with Ryan Blaney as well as Joey Logano, Denny Hamlin got into the mix now on lap 14 of 22 here in stage 3 but I could not clear Ryan Blaney to save my life and then I was getting too loose on the bottom of the track so it was not letting me get clear of that 12 of Ryan Blaney so I decided you know what if we're going to pass these guys we're going to have to try and do the undercut on the pit lane so now I was getting ready to make a pit stop here on lap 15 man I was just banking on the green flag staying out so out of turns 4 I decide we're coming into the pit lane here and we get down to pace speed absolutely no problems at all so no speeding penalty thankfully for myself here very risky though to make this call because in stage one and two we did get cautions uh now so that was a bit of a concern but i wasn't the only one that came in alex bowman came in behind us as well so we were definitely came coming in at a solid time now so it was a 15.2 second pit stop four fresh tires as well as two cans of fuel and we're going to get back on to the track and hopefully put us in front of Ryan Blaney and Joey Logano with a lap or two extra of fresher tires. That should allow the undercut to work fairly significantly well here against the AI now as we would rejoin here. Michael McDowell coming to my outside. You can see Tyler Reddick. Looks like he's coming to the pit lane just by the line. He's running as I clip the apron there into turns three. Now as we exit turns four and sure enough everybody is coming to the pit lane here as we go down this front straightaway. Eric Almarola was still out front at this point though. He had not actually come to the pit lane yet. We come to five laps to go though. Everything's cycling out or Almarola sorry he was actually exiting the pit lane there but we cycle out in front of Ryan Blaney as well as Joey Logano so the undercut did work successfully and now we're up inside the top 10 here in the final few laps of the stage so we come through now on uh, two laps to go here in stage three diving down into turns one William Byron somehow got caught behind us and he had run me down very quickly here as we're trying to hold on to P9 in this third stage now Kyle Busch leads away through turns three and turns four coming to that white flag in stage three and 
William Byron gets to my inside so much faster in that 24 car for Hendrick Motorsports. He blows right on by me as we exit turns four, but of course, we're going to try and fight back here. Now, as we get that draft from the 24 of Byron, we start the final lap here in stage three, and then the caution actually comes out on the final lap in stage three, and now we are going to get P10 for the second stage in a row, leading in to the fourth and final stage here in Charlotte Motor Speedway for the Coca-Cola 600. Kyle Busch has won the last two stages, looking to be the clear favorite going into this third, or this fourth, sorry, and final stage here in Charlotte. Things haven't gone quite our way so far, guys, but stay with it now. I'm doing everything I can, and hopefully we can make something work here in the final stage. All right, there you heard my radio transmission as we did gain one spot here on the pit lane as we're ready to go green for the fourth and final stage here in Charlotte Motor Speedway from P9 now on the inside of Ryan Blaney. So hopefully we can make something happen here because so far we've been kind of about, what, 10th place to 14th place. Kind of seems to be the general area that we've been stuck around. We just haven't been able to get up any further than that, but I'm going to be very aggressive on this restart now as we go three wide down the back straightaway with Clint Boyer. He backs out of it now as we're knowing this fourth and final stage it is go time we have to do whatever we can to get whatever track position we can martin Truex jr gets up the inside of kyle bush our teammate out of turns four two jgr cars battling for the lead now chase elliott ready to pounce in third place cole custer up in the top five now as we're up into p6 here as we complete the first lap of this fourth stage now as we dive down into turns one but i go way too deep into the corner leaving the door completely open for the 24 of william byron here as we go down the back stretch so now completely giving away p6 as we're going to be running p7 down the back stretch towards turns three just behind that 24 car now as we clip the apron as well and now we're going to slide up the hill again and give another spot away to both Clint Boyer as well as nearly Chris Busher but we hold on there and now drop down to P8 but I just had nothing here on the short run the 17 of Busher gets to my outside and drives right on by here as I just actually clip him there in that left rear but now I'm realizing that we're in trouble here in the fourth and final stage as I continue to struggle and I felt worse here in the fourth and final stage than I did in the second and third stage but yeah I had made no adjustments to the car. I just felt slower to the AI now as we lost the position to Ryan Blaney. We dropped down to P10. I was struggling so hard as we came through out of turns forward, chasing the car up the track. Eric Almarola runs me down here with just 17 laps to go. And now Cole Custer was out front in this race with William Byron, who was chasing him in that second position. But there you see the 10 drives right on by me now as we come through out of turns too. So now I'm realizing we need to try some type of strategy here if we want to have a chance at anything now. As I know the AI are likely going to take two tires on what would be the final pit stop of this race so I'm thinking of doing something a little bit different here in hopes that it will work out but we would run down Ryan Blaney and pass him to get ourselves back in the top 10 as we followed Eric Almarola through and get clear out of turns four over the 12 car. So at least running in the top 10, and that is one bright side here to this race and the Coca-Cola 600. Now as we're coming to lap 90, 11 laps to go. There you see we've got very loose out of turns. Four now as Cole Custer continues to lead, looking forward to be his first win here at Crown Jewel event. We come through now 10 laps to go, and I decide right here, six laps of fuel in the car. We're going to make our pit stop right now here, and as we dive down into turns three, I know the AI are not going to pit. There you see Clint Boyer just up ahead of us in P9. I decide here we are coming into the pit line now, making sure we get down to the pit speed. And sure enough, I do not speed once again, but I decided half a can of feel, no tires. Yes, no tires. Expecting the AI are likely going to take two tires here on the pit stop. We're trying to do something. It's just we have the points to where we can take a risk now and hoping that this will put us out front of maybe the whole pack now as we come through exiting the pit lane. Cole Custer goes by leading over William Byron as well as Kyle Busch there in third place as we come through uh, turns one. And out of turns two, Clint Boyer is going to go by us on the outside, but this pit stop cycle would start to progress now we had a few cars on the pit lane here as we come through running p34 as we dive down into turn three but just hoping it stays green of course and that will play into our favor big time now as we came into the pit lane a ways behind clint boyer and we come through now out of turns four on lap 93 boyer busher they come into the pit lane the 41 of cold custer still out on the track at this point now as we came through now on lap 94 william byron now out front custer had come to the pit lane as we exit turn four i'm realizing boyer's just coming out of the pit lane now but the caution comes out here with six laps to go and now we're going to be trapped a lap down instead but I noticed Boyer was just coming out of his pit box and we were going to be way ahead of him this strategy was going to put us up towards the front of the field if it worked out and now it did not because the caution is out and we do have a replay actually to see what brought it out but we just completely got messed over there because we're going to now be trapped a lap down along with quite a few other drivers as well but we took a risk there 
with the strategy. Absolute disappointment, though, unfortunately. That is extremely disappointing for us. Now, as we're going to be trapped alive down there, you see the replay, though, on your screen. Matt Benedetto blew a tire and went down into turns three. And sure enough, there you see, of course, very caution worthy. That was a heavy hit there for Benedetto, But unfortunately, that completely ends our chances here in the Coca Cola 600. So just absolutely terrible timing now, as we would have to take uh, four tires uh, and two cans of fuel because we're trapped alive down. Nothing we can do about it at this point. So I decided, of course, might as well just put fresh tires on it. So very unfortunate way we're going to end this race here in the Coca Cola 600. We had a car running about 10th to 14th place this whole day. We took a risk in the strategy, and it was going to put us up front if it stayed green. And unfortunately, it didn't quite work out. Now, I was confident that we were going to finish no matter what better than what we were originally going to uh, with that strategy, even though we probably wouldn't have won just because of the tire advantage uh, the AI, AI would have had in there. As you see me being very aggressive there with the AI through turns three. Now going three wide in the middle with some of these guys, and we go three wide around the outside out of turns four there with Joey Gates actually getting into the wall as well as we start the final lap here in the Coca-Cola 600. Kyle Busch out in front though over second place of Chase Elliott through turns one and two. Cole Custer kind of got messed over as well by that caution. Now it's come through out of turns four, passing the 66 of Timmy Hill. Now up into P31. We get to the inside of Brendan Gaughan. The only spot we can gain now is over Clint Boyer, who is right in front of us as we come through turns three. We're going to be very aggressive with him getting to the inside. Chase Elliott to the inside of Kyle Busch coming to the line, but Kyle Busch hangs on for win number three on the season. Wins the Coca-Cola 600 as we come through to cross the line here in a very, very disappointing 30th position. Just, of course, due to strategy not working out in our favor. Uh, just a terrible time for that caution to happen. I was so confident uh, that when we were coming through to pass Boyer on the pit lane, it was going to work out in our favor, and it didn't. There's Kyle Busch wins. Chase Elliott second. Ryan Blaney in that third position. Elliott, like I said, after we got past those short tracks, is going to be one of my favorites to watch, and sure enough, he's already proving it with a second-place finish here and the Coca-Cola 600 now. As we're down to seventh in the points, and you know what? A P31 finish, or a P30 finish it was, and we are only down to seventh in the points, so uh, that is something definitely that's good for us after looking you got to look at the positives out of it and that is definitely one of them but as always if you guys enjoyed this episode you do know what to do uh in the next one it looks like we're gonna have a bunch of different tracks here in the schedule we got mid ohio here in the xfinity series but uh in the cup series i, I don't even know where we're going yet we're about to find out though there's this do you see the truck series standings on your screen eric jones obviously at the beginning of the episode kind of giving away a victory unfortunately uh now as he was in command on the final lap in charlotte and then of course he had that contact with austin hill there you see the Xfinity series as well here. Uh, two wins for our team in the Xfinity series, just like the truck series. Uh, there's Jeremy Clements currently rounds out the playoffs, and it looks like uh, so Texas is the next race for the uh, truck series as well, and it's going to be Kansas for the Cup Series, one of my favorite uh, tracks here in NASCAR heat. So definitely excited for that one. Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, Ryan Blaney all have three wins apiece right now, as well as you see Harvick down in P8. We're P7. Kurt Busch outside of the playoffs now after the Coca-Cola 600. Uh, so is Jimmy Johnson, who is quite a ways uh, down after that DNF recently in Martinsville. Uh, Christopher Bell, though, holds on to that last spot. William Byron now up into 14th. Eric Almarola, 13th. So definitely some names to watch here uh, now as we're starting to progress towards that mid-season portion of the season. So it's going to get interesting, and I will see you guys in the next one where we go racing here at Kansas for another mile and a half. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have yourselves a great day.